and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School Moment. We're delighted that you're here. Our lesson today is entitled Loving by Serving, Loving by Serving. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for an opportunity to wrap our lives around your word. Father, we ask you to touch our hearts so that we may see the truth that you want us to see and help us to understand that it is your will for us to serve because of our love for you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And our lesson scripture is coming from John 13 verses 1 through 35. The focus scripture is from John 13 1 through 15 and 34 through 35. The key verse, for I have set you an example that you should do as I have come done to you. John 13 and 15. I will read the focus scripture. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet, Jesus answered. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I am your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should, also, you should do as I have done to you. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you but you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. What a powerful uh, focus scripture about loving by serving. Jesus is our example. You will see in John 13, Jesus turns from public ministry to his final private words with his disciples. You will see people talk about this as the upper room discourse because it took place in the second floor where Jesus had his final Passover meal. Now, when you think about the actual foot washing uh, process, it was not merely a ceremonial custom. It was practically important 
because people walked at that time through dusty streets and they were also filled with manure. And so people's feet got really, really dirty and also stinky. So not surprising to wash someone's feet was actually regarded as one of the most demeaning tasks anyone could perform. It was actually reserved for household slaves. But here we see Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our God, who actually went down to serve his disciples and have set an example for us, loving by serving. And now the introduction. This is the first of a series of five lessons on godly love among believers. We begin with the familiar story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. While the incident is quite familiar, the context within which it occurred is probably less well known or considered. The Last Supper is the setting for which for this lesson, it begins with Jesus and his disciples at the table. Jesus was well aware three days before that Judas was about to betray him. Peter would disown him and the other disciples would desert him, at least temporarily. Nevertheless, Jesus showed no fear or preoccupation with the inevitable. Neither did Jesus engage in self-pity. Instead, Jesus directed his attention to preparing and encouraging his disciples to continue his mission without his physical presence. He never stopped loving his disciples. Contrary to the old adage, don't do as I do, but do as I say do. Jesus taught by example and closed with instructions for his disciples to do likewise. And now, telling the Bible story, Jesus teaches servant leadership. The commandment of love, the commandment to love others was not new to the disciples, but loving others as Jesus taught was revolutionary. The level of sacrifice Jesus required was unprecedented to create clear understandings, Jesus demonstrated his message. He arose from the table, put on a towel around his waist, and began to wash his disciples' feet in a basin, drying them with a towel. Washing the feet of guests was a common practice as people wearing sandals and no socks generally traveled along dirty roads strewn with garbage and waste. What was uncommon was to have someone of Jesus' statue assume the role of foot washer. This role was usually assigned to the lowest servant in a household. Amazement with Jesus' action would have been shaped by many scriptures that present the notion of being at the feet of another as a humiliating experience. Peter is convinced is our next section. Can you imagine what Peter must have thought as he saw Jesus washing others' feet and moving forward toward him? Peter's reaction was um, rem reminiscent of John the Baptist's reaction to Jesus' request for John to baptize him. When Jesus declared, unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Peter was convinced he needed to submit to Jesus' will. He professed love so strong for Jesus and willing at that moment to have Jesus wash his hands and head. Whether Jesus was referring to Peter's need to have his sins washed away by the blood on the cross or the fact that Peter could learn this lesson on humility only if he submitted is uncertain. However, Peter got the message. And now... Our next section, Jesus sanctions servant leadership. We often see leaders pretending to be servants when their interest is really in taking advantage of photo opportunities. Jesus was convinced about transforming the lives of his disciples and empowering them to teach and make new disciples as they had seen Jesus earthly ministry. Jesus emphasized the goals of this lesson, for I have set 
you an example that you also do as I have done to you. Our next section is a new commandment seals the lessons and confirms discipleship. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This new commandment is succinct. Jesus prefaced this message by letting the disciples know that remaining that his remaining time with them was coming to a close. They would not be able to go with him, but he was giving them a new commandment to model knowing that this would validate them as his disciples and become a defining tenet of their ministries. And now Jesus is sharing that this is not about speaking love, but showing love. It just goes into what we have been talking about for the last few weeks. This message actually is going to um, encourage us to make sure that we watch our will because oftentimes we pray, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. So that means we have a will and then we have God's will. So what we have learned today through our lesson and have been reminded of in our lesson, that it is God's will that we demonstrate love by serving. What does that take? That takes humiliation. That also takes a mindset that when you look at the life of Jesus, he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords, but he did not come in the realm of royalty as we know it in the earthly realm, in that he came through chariots and palaces and, and all of these um, grand um, elements that we consider, but he came to serve and he came to seek and to save the lost. And here we see him making an example for us to follow, loving by serving. And now, the Sankofa. Renowned civil rights activist, Fannie Lou Hamer, is acclaimed for servant leadership in her quest for justice and equality for African Americans in the Southern United States. Born in 1917 in Montgomery County, Mississippi, Mrs. Hamer was the daughter of sharecroppers. She began working in the fields at an early age as her family's financial struggles often led to insufficient food. Even after getting married in 1944, Mrs. Hamer continued to work hard but profited just enough to get by. In 1962, however, while attending a mass meeting at a local church, Mrs. Hamer had a life-changing epiphany or revelation. During this meeting, she learned that voting was a constitutional right that should be equally extended to all citizens of the United States, including African Americans. Subsequently, she, began, she became a powerful civil rights activist. Mrs. Hamer worked with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which is also known as SNCC, an interracial civil rights organization along with other civil rights activist groups to end Mississippi's custom of sending only Caucasians to the Democratic National Convention, Mrs. Hamer assisted with the founding of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. In 1964, Ms. Hamer passionately worked with members to increase voter registrations for African Americans and to make the Democratic Party practice inclusiveness, especially with African American representation. In 1964, Mrs. Hamer in Atlantic City, New Jersey, recounted the abuses she'd endured because of her mission. 
This including having her life and the lives of her loved ones targeted by white supremacists many times, being brutally beaten by police and having as many as 16 bullets sprayed into a house she was visiting. Nevertheless, Miss Mrs. Hamer remained resolute to continue her fight as she continued to encourage others to exercise their voting rights and not sit idly by expecting change to come through prayer alone. Mrs. Hamer died in 1977, having successfully assisted with bringing national attention to civil rights struggles in Mississippi. Although unsuccessful in her bid, Mrs. Hamer also ran for Congress in Mississippi. Despite the gigantic demands of her primary mission, Mrs. Hamer also founded organizations to promote minority business opportunities and to provide childcare and other family services. Her legacy, her rich legacy, of activism and service in her own words is enshrined on her tombstone. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you have some moment this week, please look up her life because this bold, courageous woman made a profound impact that we can even feel today. To God be the glory for her courage, her steadfastness and her example. And now, if you would, for your homework, do the case study. We're gonna move now to the life application. It is easy to think people like Fannie Lou Hamer and LeBron James had some extraordinary capacities or opportunity to become servant leaders. But God had gifted each of them with abilities and opportunities to fulfill God's purposes for their lives. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your harm. To give you a hope in a future, Jeremiah 29 and 11. In the parable of talents, Jesus taught that talents for fulfilling God's plans are granted to each of us according to our abilities. Instead of comparing ourselves with others, our most important task is to seek deeper understanding about our own purpose. Of course, we can gain valuable insights and understanding from others, but our greatest source is God. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives you all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you, James 1 and 5. Now let me share with you one of the most life-changing messages that I heard in my journey was uh, you were born for a purpose. And this came from Miles Monroe. He preached and he preached and he preached that every life that God puts on this earth is a life of purpose. So then you keep saying, well, what am I here for? Why am I here? Why am I sucking up the air? And what am I supposed to be doing? If you want to know what you're supposed to do in all thy getting, get understanding and ask the Lord, what is your purpose? Get on your mission like Fannie Lou Hamer, like LeBron James, like Jesus Christ, our savior, Find your purpose and begin to engage in your mission and let no one stop you. Do not let your haters stop you. Let no one's words stop you. Let no one who may be jealous of you stop you. Because at the end of the day, what God gives us to do, it will be up to us to make sure we carry it out. So all these gifts he has in our lives, we never have to make room for our gifts, but I would love to say this, you have to make your gifts available so people can see a gift. You keep operating in it. You keep operating in it and God will allow you to even do more to bless his people, not for his name's sake, not for our name's sake, 
but for God's name's sake, because we bear his name and we are his children. So all glory goes to God because we are not our own. We were bought with a price and it is only in him that we live, move and have our being. So we like to say for all of the examples that we have in our lesson today, to God be the glory. So let us align ourselves up even to be even a greater example of loving by serving. And now the questions, what signs of servant leadership do you see in your life? Now I'm going to give you that question for you to think about. So when you think about serving, servant leadership, what signs do you see in your life? If Jesus is giving us an example, what example can you think about? And if you want to share in the comment section, feel free to do so because you help other people understand how they can serve. The other question, which is question two, how comfortable are you with knowing your purpose or mission? Now, I will tell you, when I heard the message from Dr. Miles Monroe, I didn't know what my purpose was. I really did not know. But when you begin to, um, he gave this example, when you have an item that you purchase from the store and that item comes with a manual. So if you want to know how that item works, you got to refer, you've got to refer to the manual. So when I, he gave the example that we were, we are created beings. So we came with a manual and it is called the Holy Bible. So if you want to understand how we're supposed to function, get the manual and read the book. Everything we need in this life, our map for who we are, who we are supposed to be, is in the scriptures. So you begin to look in the scriptures and God will show you clarity, your purpose and your mission. Once you find it, you can run confident, confidently in it. And then you look at Jesus. He said, my meat is to do my father's will. He came to seek and to save the lost. You will see that once he started his public ministry, he started walking in it. There were people who were trying to hurt him, harm him, say all types of manner of evil about him, but he stayed focused on his mission. And when it was time for him to go to the cross, he knew that his time was at hand. That's the lesson we're studying today. And he gave us an example of how to serve and obey. Our next question, what thoughts can you use from this lesson to improve your leadership at home, in the church, in your community? What thoughts? One thing I will say is, Whenever there is service, it requires a sacrifice. And the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If you can cook and help people who have children, cook and help people. Everybody has to cook now. Mm -hmm. We have to cook more now, but if you have more than you can ever eat, call up someone, socially distance, and make sure that we, we deliver it to them safely. People will never forget how we make them feel. So that's home, church, community. If people need things and you are at the store and you need to just do a, a I like to say a ride by and do a porch blessings, go ahead and think about personal care items for people who can't drive. Put it in a bag and let them know that you're dropping some items off. It's loving and caring and serving. The other um, part is that it shows people that we love the Lord and are doing His will. Question number four, November 1st is All Saints Day when many remember the people of faith who have come before and have passed away. Call the names of those who have contributed to the development of your faith and who have served in the church. I like to say call their names and also follow their examples. Do what they did. 
because if they have sown into your life, make sure that you continue to sow seeds of love. Every deed is a seed. Everything we do, everything we can give, whatever we give, God is honored by our sacrifices. And I do believe that he is well pleased if he sees us loving and caring for each other. And now, the closing devotion. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, our Heavenly Father, to you we owe everything. Please bless us with genuine, inclusive love that will empower us to lead wherever we are as Jesus demonstrated. Please strengthen us to give, to let our light shine as we strive to serve others. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. 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 I certainly hope you enjoyed our lesson today, which is entitled Loving by Serving. And so now let's go and serve because of the love we have. Amen. Thank you so much for this time. We hope to see you next week and may the Lord God continue to bless you real good and be reminded to please Please make sure you exercise your right to vote. Let's make a difference in this world. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.